Good morning to all and welcome to the session, the Hindu Editorial Analysis for Proficiency in English. Today's editorial is an inspiring editorial. It's all about Rafael Nadal. He has won his 14th French Open title. With this, he has got 22 Grand Slam titles or trophies, and that is an incredible feat. Nadal is known for his never give up attitude and uh, usually a player when he or she loses the first two sets, usually he loses the first two sets. They lose confidence, they become nervous, they become diffident, they become jittery. But Nadal usually, after losing the first two sets, he goes on to win the title or that particular match. There's a lot to learn from his spirit. Now, besides the inspiring, I said this is an inspiring editorial. Besides that, there are a lot of words you can learn from this editorial. Let us start the session with uh, editorial vocabulary. The very first word, immortal. Mortal, opposite, immortal. Part of speech, adjective. Immortal achievement, immortal accomplishment. In this context, what does it mean? Living forever, never dying or decaying. Something stays for a long time, forever. Then we say, immortal name, immortal achievement. An important word, tally. This goes with, uh, the context is uh, tennis, sport, and it goes with uh, the number of titles, a current score or amount. In this context, it is not the amount, it is a score, current score, the latest score. Accumulate, part of speech verb, gather together or acquire an increasing number of quantity of something. You acquire something, you accumulate something, you gather something, they all mean the same. In this context, accumulation of Grand Slam titles. Ravage, we have got for the first time an important word, part of speech uh, verb, it's a regular verb. Cause a severe and extensive damage to someone or something. Ravaged, in this context, the body. Pensive, we have got many a time. Pensive takes the word mood, pensive mood. Pensive mood means what? To be, to think of something very seriously, to get into deep thinking. Pensive, I hope everything is perfect, audio and video, please say yes or no. I don't see any response from your end. Engaged in involving or reflecting deep or serious thought. When someone is in serious thought, we say, is in a pensive mood. You can also think of words like contemplate, introspect, and two expressions. If someone thinks a lot about the past, we say, don't dwell on the past, don't brood over the past. Oh, thank you very much. Chronic, an important word. Based on word form, sometimes they have, in a few exams, they've given questions based on this word. Chronic is different. Chronicles, different. Chronicles goes with the time factor. Chronic goes with diseases, part of speech adjective. And chronicles, noun. What does it mean, chronic? It goes, as I said, illness. Persisting for a long time or constantly recurring. Something lasts for a long time, we use the word chronic. But do remember it goes with ailment, illness, or disease. Thank you very much for the feedback. A limp, part of speech verb. It is also a regular verb. Walk with difficulty. Typically because of a damaged or stiff leg or foot. Sometimes what happens, what happens, you get hurt. Then you, walk, you cannot walk properly. One leg up, one leg down. Then we use the term limp. This goes when someone gets hurt, the person may limp. And also if you take a, a physically handicapped person, that person also may limp while walking. Valedictory, usually this takes the word function. There are two words you have to recollect. One is inaugural function, welcoming. Valedictory function, bidding farewell. Valedictory, part of speech adjective, it goes with the word function. Serving as a farewell, as I said. Num, the letter B is silent, part of speech adjective, of a part of the body deprived of the power of physical sensation. When you touch something, usually there's a sensation. Imagine you touch something very hot, then you take back your hand or your finger. What is the reason? Because of that unbearable sensation. But sometimes, usually, when a person gets frostbite, Usually that goes with uh, mountaineers. They lose the sensation, physical sensation. Then we use the term numb, 
the letter B is silent, deprived of the power of physical sensation. You don't feel anything when you touch something, whether it is hot or cold, there's no sensation, then usually it goes with body parts. Sometimes when you experience a shock, then your brain also becomes numb. That means you won't be able to think. Euphoria is a positive word, part of speech noun, a feeling or state of intense excitement and happiness. When you win something, achieve something, you have that feeling of euphoria, a lot of pleasure, excitement, and happiness. Demolition usually goes with buildings. What does it mean, part of speech noun? Demolish the verb form, the act of destroying something. As I said, usually it goes with uh, a building, but sometimes a player is demolished, means destroyed completely. Epitaph, epitaph, a new word we have got for the first time. A literal meaning of that, a phrase or form of words written in memory of a person who has died, especially as an inscription on a tombstone. That is the literal meaning. But here the second meaning. What is the second meaning of this word? Something by which a person, time or event will be remembered. Nadal will be remembered. That is a context. We have more words. Stellar takes the word performance. Stellar performance, part of speech. Uh, actually, it is adjective. Of people or their activities, extremely high in quality. And do remember the combination stellar performance. High quality, high in quality, outstanding, extraordinary. Bout, part of speech, noun, a short period of intense activity of a specified kind. Usually it goes with the word pain. Relapse, part of speech verb, it's a regular verb, of a sick or injured person deteriorate after a period of improvement. You improve, again, you go back, then we use when someone is not well. There is some improvement, but after some time, the person's health deteriorates then we use the term relapse. Master, an important word, part of speech verb. It's a regular verb. It means collect or assemble. We can also think of the word gather, master courage, master confidence, and gather, collect, or assemble a number or amount. That is one meaning, but usually it goes with courage, confidence. Arousing, exciting, stirring. So rousing performance, it also takes the word performance, an important word. Or inspiring, or struck, or inspiring adjective, causing you to feel great respect or admiration. You feel someone's achievement and you say it is all inspiring. Abdicate, another important word of a monarch, typical meaning, literal meaning, renounce one's throne. In this context, uh, renouncing the title, number one title, not with Nadal, with another player. These are the words from today's editorial, a lot of words. And besides that, today's editorial is an inspiring editorial. Nadal is known for, why is it inspiring? Nadal, one of the greatest tennis players, known is known for his never give up attitude. That is the best part when, when we talk about Nadal. How does it start? Joy after pain. Usually when you are in pain, you tend to give up, but not, it doesn't go with Nadal. So it starts with joy after pain. During the tournament, he had a lot of pain, anguish. Anguish means acute pain, physical or mental. But what is the main idea of this editorial? Nadal and Sviatek might have lent tennis some stability at the top. I don't know much about women's tennis, but if you take men's tennis, we have three names that pop up or stand out. One is Federer, the other Nadal, and the third one, Djokovic. And uh, these three players, till the recent past, they had the same number of Grand Slam titles, 20 each. But now, Nadal is ahead of Federer and Djokovic. Federer and Djokovic, 20 each, but Nadal now, he has 22 two titles ahead of the top players. At the top, we have three players, but now Nadal stands out. This, the editorial talks about providing stability at the top, top players, men's tennis or women's tennis. Nadal and Sviatek might have lent. Whatever you see in green, important grammar point of view, exam point of view, 
Here we have a helping verb, not the short one, not the one word expression, but a lengthy one. Might have done, might have lent. Lend is a verb, lend, lent, lent. Might have lent. Lent, lend has got two meanings. One is give. Usually it goes with the finance, lend money. But here, give something, a supporting hand or help. Might have lent tennis, might have given tennis some stability at the top. At the top, an important phrase. And when we talk about the position, we have to use a definite article, the, that you have to recollect. Might have, when do we use this expression, might have done, might have taken, we use it to talk about a past possibility, which is a guess. Something happened in the past, you don't know how it happened. When you don't know how it happened, obviously you try to guess. And when you talk about a past possibility, which is a guess, you have to use this sentence pattern, might plus have plus verb, any verb for that matter, past participle form. Rafael Nadal's is an import, immortal presence at Roland Garros. Here, Rafael Nadal's means his presence. He is an immortal presence at Roland Garros. That is the quote, name of the quote, where the French Open is played. There is one word here, immortal. Immortal means what? Living forever, never dying or decaying. Immortal reputation, immortal name, immortal fame. The Spaniard, obviously, the reason being he has won 14 times the French Open. That is something like incredible. He belongs to Spain. The Spaniard, after all, has a statue of himself at the site that is more than life size, a rare tribute for a player still active. Usually a statue is erected when a person passes away as a tribute, as a mark of respect. But in this context, when it comes to Nadal, the Spaniard, after all, has a statue of himself at the site that is more than life size, pretty big statue, a rare tribute for a player still active. Nadal is still active. In spite of that, he has a statue that is statue of himself that is more than life size, bigger than life size. Remember that expression, an important one. Now he talks about the event, what exactly happened on Sunday, how we won the title, the French Open for the 14th time, which is a rare accomplishment. On Sunday, the 36 year old showed why his, his ability, his skill, his acumen, whatever you say, is, is such a timeless existence by winning his 14th French Open crown that also gave him his 22nd major Grand Slam title, pulling him too clear of Roger Federer and Novak Djokovic in the all-time men's tally. As I said, this sentence talks about how he, why he stands out. On Sunday, the 36-year-old showed why his presence or his ability or his adroitness or skill is such a timeless existence by winning his 14 French Open crown that also gave him his 22nd Grand Slam title or major, pulling him too clear off ahead of Roger Federer and Novak Djokovic in the all-time men's tally. Federer and Djokovic, they have 20 titles, Grand Slam titles each. It is unthinkable that 14 was once Pete Sampras' record for overall Grand Slam trophies won. Pete Sampras, Pete Sampras, American player, a greatest, one of the greatest players. He was the number one at one stage. And when he was the number one, he had 14 Grand Slam titles. That was a record. Now look at this. Someone not in the distant past, someone Please listen to the editorial analysis. After that, you could ask whatever you wish to ask. It is unthinkable, incredible, that 14, one stage, it was a record. And uh, Pete Sampras had that. He was the number one at one stage. But today, Nadal, he has won 14 French Open, 14 times the French Open. That is definitely a great accomplishment. It is unthinkable that 14 was once Pete Sampras record for overall Grand Slam trophies won. That Nadal has accumulated in this context, gathered, got as many in Paris, means 14 in Paris, the French Open title or trophies in Paris, in just 18 attempts. That is again incredible, unbelievable. 
and with an injury ravaged body is testament to his clay court genius as well as his unparalleled ability to play through pain and extreme physical discomfort nadal is known for that nadal is known for two things i don't want to pass any personal comment but in my opinion it's only something personal federer is a different player nadal is a different player federer known for his classic approach or his uh, style is completely different he looks he makes things look simple easy on the contrary nadal goes upside down to win a particular point or to win a match nadal is known for his physical ability whereas federer is known for his uh, skill and uh, a different league altogether both of them uh, belong to they don't they're not the regular players regular players completely different and higher level djokovic is a combination of nadal and federer again a personal statement that nadal has accumulated got or gathered as many in paris means what 14 titles the french open trophies in paris in just 18 attempts not only that and with an injury ravaged body there's one important word ravage ravage means what cause severe and extensive damage to in this context the body he is testament a tribute to his clay court genius as well as his unparalleled ability to play through pain and extreme physical di- discomfort any other player would have given up not nadal and there is something in green over here as well as when we use expressions like with together with uh, along with as well as there are about 10 to 15 then the verb agrees with the first subject that rule you have to recollect leading into the tournament and now he talks about what he had a lot of problems with those problems he entered the tournament in spite of that he could win the title leading into the tournament nadal was pensive there are so many words this particular slide you got to listen very carefully pensive means what engaged in involving or reflecting deep or serious thought sometimes what happens you see your friend you wish your friend he may not respond he looks lost that means what he is thinking of something very seriously he is in deep or serious thought then you have to use the word he is in a pensive mood it takes a word mood pensive mood and pessimistic optimistic a person with a positive attitude pessimistic a person with a negative attitude leading into the tournament that means he entered the tournament nadal was pensive pensive means he was lost in his thoughts or involved in deep thinking and pessimistic after his chronic left foot injury chronic an important word lasting for a long time usually it goes with uh, a disease ailment or illness left foot injury forced him to limp out of the rome masters another tournament limp out of another word limp means what walk with difficulty typically because of a damaged or stiff leg or foot when you get physically hurt usually leg or foot you cannot walk properly one leg up one leg down and if a person is physically handicapped also they cannot walk properly then we use the word limp if someone walks that way we ask the question why are you limping so he had to limp out of the rome masters because of left foot injury a key preparatory event towards the french open once in paris his mood turned increasingly valedictory with the pain killing injections needed to keep his leg numb perhaps telling him that the end was near it was completely on the negative side once in paris to play the french open his mood turned increasingly valedictory valedictory means usually it goes with functions when you go to a college or a university at the time when you join when you enroll initial days they organize a an inaugural function a welcoming function at the fag end of the year they organize valedictory function valedictory means serving as a farewell saying goodbye to everyone once in paris his mood turned increasingly valedictory with the pain killing injections needed to keep his leg numb numb means without any sensation and the letter b is silent 
perhaps telling him that the end was near, telling him that he had to quit. However, contrasting information, however, the fortnight means two weeks ended in such euphoria. On the contrary, the fortnight ended in such euphoria, an important word means what? A feeling or state of intense excitement and happiness with a straight set demolition, not four sets, not five sets, only three sets, straight set demolition, demolition of Norwegian Casper root. Demolition usually goes with buildings. What does it mean? The act of destroying something completely. But in this context, uh, winning over Norwegian Casper root, that in, in the epitaph to the Nadal's incredible career, incredible, unbelievable. There's another important word, epitaph means what? Literal meaning is something different. It goes with inscription written on a tomb. But in this context, uh, something by which a person, time or event, in this context, obviously, person will be remembered. Not an easy thing. And it talks about whenever written, his 14th triumph victory will be more than just a normal data point, not simply related to the data, but related to accomplishment, achievement. Now, it talks about the year for Nadal. The year has been, the year is not over, so we have to use present perfect. The year has been unlike. As I said, you have to recollect certain words, certain rules when you see certain words, with, along with, together with, as well as, like, unlike, besides, in addition to, no less than. Many of these expressions, if you use in a sentence, you have to or the verb agrees with the first subject, not the second subject, that you have to recollect. The year has been unlike any for Nadal, means not the same, both in terms of the success he has had. This is again an important expression. He has had present perfect and the physical toll he has had to bear. Again, he has had to bear. Uh, it is important from the exam point of view, a bit confusing under pressure. No, both are entirely different. Annihilation means to remove completely. That has a different connotation altogether, goes with a different context, not in this context. And annihilation means eradicate, root out. That is completely different. Demolition is different. This is again in green, means important. What is the rule you have to recollect here? Whenever we start a sentence or begin a sentence with a negative expression, the clause should be in interrogative form. That is very important. And they have given in many exams, competitive exams. Never before, this is a negative expression. We started the sentence, the sentence started with a negative expression. Never before, in his stellar career, don't consider the phrase, had he secured, he had secured past perfect affirmative, had he secured past perfect interrogative. So here we have to use interrogative form. The clause should be in interrogative. Never before in his stellar career, there's one word stellar. It goes with people, activities, extremely high in quality. Never before in his stellar career had he secured the opening two slams of the year and the 20 straight matches he won at the start of 2022. Three titles in a final is a career best. It talks about what he has achieved this year, and it is a career best, but not easy. He had to fight. There's one helping verb, have to. Third person singular has to. What is the use? It is used to express an obligation imposed by an external authority or a situation. In this context, situation. But have to or has to present, what is the past form, had to? But he had to fight through a bout of COVID-19, bout, another important word, a short period of intense activity of a specified kind. Usually it goes with suffering. Bout of COVID-19 that nearly derailed his Australian open plans. Derail, another important word, usually it goes with trains. Derail means what? To go off the track. Go off the track. On the track, opposite of the track. A stress fracture in their ribs, that did not allow him to touch a racket for six weeks. And you cannot imagine that guy winning the French Open, forcing him to miss vital clay court warm up tournaments in Monte Carlo and Barcelona, and undercooking him for the return in Madrid 
and a relapse of the foot injury. So this talks about what physical injuries he had, problems he had, and he had to miss, forcing him to miss vital, important clay court warm-up tournaments in Monte Carlo and Barcelona, and undercooking him means not ready for a return in Madrid, for the return in Madrid, and a relapse of the foot injury. Another important word, relapse, means what? Of a sick or injured person deteriorate after a period of improvement. Someone improves or some condition improves, but after some time it goes back. Then we say relapse. It goes with injury, uh, disease, health-related ailments. That he could still, could, it talks about past ability. Can talks about present ability. That he could still master the tennis, gather, collect, assemble. The tennis to overcome four top 10 players. That is not easy. Four top 10 players in the French capital, including Djokovic in the quarterfinal, with a rousing performance. A rousing means exciting, stirring. Proved yet again that he remains a sport's ultimate competitor. Unbeatable. And you can also think the word uh, something like formidable, formidable opponent. Iga Swiatek was every bit as authoritative in stamping her authority on the women's side. Now he talks about Swiatek, women's champion, claiming her second French Open title in three years. It was a sixth straight tournament victory for the Pole. Polish people, for them, for them we use Pole, for the Pole. She belongs to Poland, so for the Pole, a run that has featured an awe-inspiring 35-match winning streak, awe-inspiring, causing you to feel great respect or admiration. If in Ash Bharti women's tennis had a stable world number one, until the Aussie abdicated her throne in March, abdicate, renounce, Sviatek is proving to be a worthy successor. Now she is the number one. This is all about the editorial, quite uh, inspiring. Besides that, a lot of words to learn. Now let us go to comprehension skill. Enhance your comprehension skill, comprehension, reading comprehension skill based on the editorial. What are the questions you can think of? What is this editorial about? You should write because it's an inspiring one and you can learn something from that. What a rare tribute for a player still active. What is a rare tribute? What is a rare tribute for a player still active? Based on rare tribute, still active, player still active, you should be able to locate and write the answer. What is testament to Nadal's clay court genius? Testament, the tribute to Nadal's clay court genius. Again, based on these words, you should be able to. What forced Nadal to limp out of the Rome Masters, a key preparatory event before the French Open? Who was every bit as authoritative in stamping her authority on the women's side? Only two, two names have been mentioned and should not be a problem to answer the question. Give me a few minutes. I'm launched today. I'm going to launch, rather launched, a new course. Target SBI clerk and IBPS clerk. Exam-oriented, student-centric course. What are the features? Live lectures, concept-oriented, practice questions. Topic-wise test, mock test, live explanations. Medium, English, not bilingual, validity one year, and time is 11.30 a.m. Live online classes, and it's a new course I have launched today. Grammar course I launched yesterday. You all know that. Please go through. And this grammar course, 60 plus hours, everything related to English grammar from competitive exams point of view. This is also a new course. If you want to purchase a course, first you have to go to Google Play Store, search for Murthy's English, download the app, go to courses, not batches, and buy the course. Thank you. Now let us go to practice questions based on exam topics. The first five questions deal with uh, error location. Not very difficult, but to some extent challenging. Read the first sentence and try to spot the error. If tomorrow is declared a holiday, we shall go to a picnic. This goes with common errors. If you know the common error, you can answer within a few seconds. If you're not aware of that, then not possible.
After 15 years, of course, Srinivas recorded classes after on June 15th or after June 15th, a separate course. But this course, live classes. Live classes also, if you miss a live session, you can watch the recorded video and the validity is for one year. You can watch any number of times. Here, if tomorrow is declared a holiday, nothing wrong. We shall, I, we, we can use will or shall, no problem. To a picnic is not correct. Usually people make a mistake when it comes to the preposition that goes with picnic. We have to say, we shall go on a picnic. We can also use fur, but I don't prefer, I don't suggest fur. Go on a picnic. Please remember the correct preposition is go on a picnic, not to a picnic. That's very good. Let us go. No, there is an error. Go on a picnic, not to a picnic. Two is not correct. Go to sentence number two. <coughs> Excuse me. Raju found it difficult to explain his final exam marks to his parents. Where is the error? Raju found it difficult to explain his final exam marks to his parents. No, no, no. Context goes into past. Nothing wrong with found. He found it difficult. There is an error. Answer is not the fifth option. There is an error. No, no. Here, explain his final marks. You don't explain your marks. You disclose your marks. You tell your marks. You reveal your marks. Here, to reveal or disclose. Raju found it difficult to reveal his final exam marks. Find it, found it difficult to disclose his final exam marks. Not explain, reveal, disclose, tell. No, no, the word explain is not at all correct. You don't explain your marks. You disclose your marks, you reveal your marks. No one has got it right. That means it's a tough question. Question number three, my grandfather used to go for a walk every morning. There is one important helping verb over here, used to. Yes, Vasu, reveal, that is the right word. You can also use a word, disclose. My grandfather used to go for a walk every morning. No, used to go. It is used to express past habitual actions. Past habitual actions, we use two helping verbs. One is used to go, the other one would. Very good, Nagamani has got it right. Only one or Mohana also. After that, I see don't two. No error whatsoever. My grandfather used to go, would go for a walk every morning. Perfect. Flawless. Question number three, no error. Please respect the fifth option, but not always. With a fresh coat of paint, the school can look much nice. Yes, that's right. Surendra, past habitual actions. It's always better during the live session you write whatever you know then that way you will be able to remember, consolidate. In the exam, within no time, you'll be able to answer any question for that matter. Nicer, no, no. No, we don't say nicer. That is not correct. With a fresh coat of paint, the school can look. I know, you respect it. Nicer, no, not at all correct. You can say much better, that is one way to Madhav, you're right, but that is not the idea here. Here, don't touch 
nice look can look very nice much is not correct what is the correct word very you can also say can look much better either way but there's an error in the fourth part with a fresh coat of paint the school can look very nice with a fresh coat of paint the school can look much better so nice you cannot very nice can look very nice you had watered the plant regularly it would not have wilted wilt to become dry a week and usually when it comes to plants they bend they go towards the ground if you don't water a particular plant for two or three days the plant gets wilted where is the error question number five you had watered the plant regularly it would not have wilted this is a good question in the sense a challenging question not that easy and this goes with uh, past conditional conditionals to be specific past conditional any conditional we have to use the word if but english has rules english has exceptions you can say and this is past conditional main clause would affirmative or negative plus how plus verb past participle form and if clause should be in past perfect past perfect tense but there's a choice if you use the word if past perfect tense should be in affirmative form that is one pattern and you have a choice what is a choice we can drop the word if if you drop the word if past perfect tense should be in interrogative form you had affirmative not correct it should be had you had you watered the plant that is interrogative because we dropped the word if we have to use the interrogative form there are two patterns if you had watered the plant or had you watered the plant if you had come to the party had you come to the party and this one is not that easy you have to know only then you can answer now let us go to para jumble not that easy first you try to get the pairs or try to get the topic sentence suggest that no subject cannot be the first one as of june hold that one with 190 cases as on may june may so hold this also the who once again once again stressed cannot be the first one and uh, these countries demonstrative adjective cannot be the topic sentence the first sentence no subject cannot be the first one so it should be either b or c obviously as of june 1st 2022 over 550 lab confirmed monkeypox cases sentence is not complete where is the continuity? B is the first one. Yes, pair, because the sentence is incomplete. Cases have been reported from 30 countries. The World Health Organization said at a press briefing, BF1 pair. And there's a clue for the third one. What is that? Have been reported from 30 countries. Now, easy to guess the third one. 30 countries clue countries should not take this long no no not c how come third one is e very good here 30 countries. These countries are predominantly in Europe and North America, which are not endemic for monkeypox virus. Obviously, the third one is E. 30 countries and these countries. Continuity of thought. Demonstrative adjective. These countries. That means the third, 30 countries. Now, what is the fourth one? European, these countries are predominantly Europe and North America. Where do you find the countries, European names of European countries? The UK, Europe, 
Spain, Europe, Portugal, Europe. So obviously it should be the fourth one, EC. With 190 cases as on May 30th, the outbreak in the UK is the largest so far, with Spain 132 cases and Portugal 132 cases, being the other countries, again countries, with a large number of monkeypox cases. So BFEC, what is the fifth one? Here, you have two sentences, but punctuation, if at all, they give. Easy to make out. D. The World Health Organization once again stressed a large number of cases detected in more than two dozen countries within a short time interval suggests that there may have been undetected transmission for some time. DA, one pair. So what is the correct order? BF, EC, DA. Have you got it right? Let us go to idioms. Important idioms, they have given many a time. To ask for help when there's really no danger. This has been given many a time, SBI. The first one, to ask for help when there's really no danger. There's no danger, still you ask for help for fun's sake. So what is the idiom? First one, first one, what is the answer? No one has answered the first one. Anyhow, 1D, very good. Who is this, Madhav? First one to answer. To ask for help when there's really no danger, cry wolf. Answer is D. Someone or something that generates a steady a return of profits. Steady return of profits. A return of profits, easy to make out cash. So what is the answer? E is the answer, cash cow. To become a victim. That is another idiomatic expression. A raise a false alarm. That is a meaning in fact. Cry wolf. To become a victim, fall prey to someone or something. Answer is A. Everyone has a time of success and satisfaction. Everyone has a time of success and satisfaction. For that, what do you say? Every dog has its day. Answer is B. Every dog has its day. Usually little known person who unexpectedly wins or succeeds. Dark horse. C is the answer. Has anyone got all the five correct? That's good. Because they have been, these have been given many a time in different competitive exams, especially SBI. Now let us go to the last slide from enrichment point of view. Editorial vocabulary. Immortal, part of speech, adjective. What does it mean? Living forever. Immortal, fame, name, reputation. All the five correct. Very good, Sashikant. Slick, mellow, all the five, great, highly appreciable. Accumulate, it's a regular verb, accumulated. What does it mean? Gather together or acquire, 2G, 2G. Ravage, a regular verb, ravaged, means what? Cause severe damage to something or someone. J is the answer. Pensive mood means what? Adjective. Engaged in deep thought. E is the answer. Chronic disease. Chronicles, different, a different word. Chronicles, annals, archives. You have to recollect. Chronic, part of speech, adjective. Means what? Persisting or lasting for a long time. A limp, a regular verb. Limped. So, verb.
walk with difficulty because your foot or leg damaged. Yes, you're right, Madhav. Beyond any doubt. Answer is A. Valedictory function, that means adjective. Serving as a farewell, B is the answer. Num, B is silent. Num, finger. Num, toe. Part of speech, adjective. It could be a verb as well. Losing the sensation. Deprived of physical sensation. Answer is E. How come? Uh, D is the answer. Euphoria, an important word. State of intense excitement. Part of speech, noun. H is the answer. Demolition. Demolish verb. Demolition, noun. Means act of destroying something. Usually it goes with buildings. If you say, sir, I have got all the 10 correct, that is highly appreciable. That's all for today. Hope you guys have got enriched. Have a nice day. Do remember to subscribe and share. After the session, go to the description of the video and click on the link Murthy's English to join the Telegram group. Thank you very much.